Welcome to the Welcome to the Gray 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 Welcome to the Gray Zone. Eavesdrop on the woke conversation, bitches. What's up? What's up, y'all? Y'all like our new intro? Y'all better. That's what I thought. Today, we're going to be talking about social media. Check me, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How you doing, Dr. P? Pretty good. Pretty good. Hey. Yo. So, social media. We're going to talk about how that it has affected society and how it has affected relationships, uh, social relationships. MySpace, y'all familiar with that? Tom and your top five friends um, <laughs> from 2003. And he had that black t-shirt, right? And he was like leaned over on the side or something like that like, from like a computer or something. It was kind of like a weird Something thing. like that. Something like that. Was he even a real person? I don't even know. Yeah, he's a real person. He's, real he's person. been like traveling now. His pictures, you know, he's selling so, a whole bunch of his photography or whatever. He he made mad bank off So he of, did actually make money off MySpace. Okay, yeah. good for Tom. He got a whole bunch of Insta followers now. Oh, word. He went from friends to followers. And then, you know, Facebook uh, came out few years after that zuckerberg and now we have instagram we have twitter we have we got Pinterest, google plus we got google plus what else we got we got linkedin we got tumblr tumblr LinkedIn. oh man oh man we got a lot we got a lot yep but we gonna hop right in check mix has social media impaired us from developing real relationships First of all, what's a relationship to you? So you got different types of relationships, right? You got your associates, acquaintances. That's your high and by type of people, acquaintances. Mm-hmm. Your associates may be, may be like a little bit more closer to you. You know what I'm saying? Like a coworker could be an associate. Like your real cool coworker, that could be an associate. Okay. And then you got like your friends, right? And then you got like your close friends that circle a little bit smaller and then you got your best friend or (laughs) best friends right and that's usually people who like know you inside out and stuff like that so pretty much when you go from acquaintance to associate that is like the level of friendship that you have right okay i mean unless you have like siblings and then that's like your assigned friend so it's that's like a that's a whole different (laughs) can of worms over there you know what i'm saying so or associates some not always they don't always get along but go ahead yeah okay so for social media has it really impaired us from developing real relationships see i'm not sure right because social media is like a tool right it's like yes. a hammer i could either use that hammer to break shit down you know sure. put holes in the walls or i could use that same hammer to hammer in some nails so that i can actually build walls yeah. So it's a matter of how you use it. Now, for when I had Facebook, everybody that was my Facebook friend were people who I actually met and who I was just like, yo, y'all are cool. Okay. They weren't really like my friends. They included my friends, my best friends, my close friends, and my family. Yeah. But these are all people that I actually knew. Now, people, they don't necessarily, they just add people to follow or to stunt in front of people to see how well how well they are so it depends on what you how well they are you mean how they're socially viewed where they rank in society is that kind of yes you're getting at okay Mm -hmm. so it depends on what you're using social media for so if you're using social media for you know to actually build real relationships i can tell you that i actually met a long lost cousin through Facebook okay. back in the day. And I didn't even, cause we had the same last name. So we had this whole like last name, Facebook group or whatever, yada, yada, yada. We ended up talking to different people. And lo and behold, I thought out that, yo, this dude who looks absolutely nothing like me, white dude from London. And we are legit cousins, like second you got cousins. got a white cousin? So, okay. Yeah, we we'll, are second cousins. We'll talk about that another time. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I have, listen, I'm Jamaican. We got all different colors. Don't, don't come for me. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so in that case, you know, you can really 
foster, you can build great, you know, new relationships and foster those same relationships. And so, like I said, it's a tool. It depends on how you use it. All right. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, in real life, you know, I think personally, I got acquaintances. I got associates, like you said. I have friends. And I have real close friends. You had like 10 layers going on. I have like... Wait, which one am I? Am I a close friend? And what am I? You are a friend in between close friend. You work in there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You work in there. (laughs) But no, my close friends tend to be like... They're like... Dudes? No. People from childhood that know me in and out, right? Um, That have known me for years on a personal level. Like they can just kind of read my mind. So it's not necessarily... For me personally, it's not necessarily that like... You haven't, you just haven't put in, you haven't gotten to know me on that level. Yeah. Put in that work. You got to put in that work techniques. All right. So I got to put in that work to, you know, to increase my, you know, (laughs) our intimacy level so we can, so I can be at that close friend, best friend relationship. I got you. Okay. Yeah. We associate. No, we're friends. (laughs) Okay. Let's get back to the point. Social media though is definitely very different. Um, Kind of like what you were saying, I'm kind of fed up with it and I've kind of been mocking it. Mm-hmm. Everyone seems to just be, you know, there for the likes. I, yep. I mean, I like actually, that Jimmy song, I do it for the love and I do it for the likes. Yeah. People get addicted to these likes. Exactly. Let me finish. Let me finish. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. I'd also say it also depends on the different worlds you're in, right? Like, I find that some people kind of use it for networking. Like, people who I went to school with, um, you know, they'll be like, hey, uh, you know, I'm moving to Texas in a month. Does anyone know anyone who has any housing, right? And, you know, I also see, like, they tend to be more supportive of each other, at least, you know, on a... uh, I don't want to say superficial level, but like, you know, if someone passed away or something like that, they'll share important news, right? And they'll uh-huh. get encouragement and support from that. However, coming back to South Florida where I'm at, it's a whole bunch of ratchet people, um, not, not from a judgmental standpoint, <laughs> but people are just like, you know, trying to show off their wannabe glamorous and happy lives, right? You know what I mean? So they're doing it for the gram. They're doing it for the gram, exactly. And so... In that case, to me, that's not like, you know, social media is it, it's kind of it's kind of being blurred um, and it's it's not real. And I like to make fun of that aspect. I got you. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, because um, I even had to, like, check myself because yeah. last weekend I went to Chicago. You know, what I'm saying I went there, saw the sites and I actually went on a Ferris wheel for the first time. Hashtag no judgment. So I, I went in this Ferris wheel. Judge. I was like mad hyped to go in this Ferris wheel at the Navy Pier, all the stuff. And I just, and I, you know, sat there mad excited. And then I'm like, oh, that's it. And immediately what I did is I opened up my Snapchat and I went on a rant about how this Ferris wheel ride was anticlimactic. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm literally in a cubby thing or whatever with like, three other people not giving two F's right. That I'm literally having my phone in the selfie, the classic selfie position ranting in front of people who are literally just having like a random conversation. I'm and then, glad so, you caught that. Go ahead. Yeah. So, but anyway, <laughs> so you know, I posted it or whatever. Cause I was just like, I was just fed up. Right. Cause it was like $16. I'm like, damn, like this is $16, you know, yada, yada. Anyway. So, I posted it immediately. I, I was so trigger happy. And then as I was walking, I started to reflect and I'm like, damn, I literally, I, it was so, I was, I was so quick to come and record something that was negative. You know what I'm saying? Making fun of the experience and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was up there for the sights. Right. Yeah. I was up there to see the, you know, the beautiful Chicago You're skyline. Chicago. Yeah. And I wasn't able to do that because I'm over here ranting on my cell phone. Sure. About this. And I'm just like, yo, 
This is ridiculous. People would love to have the opportunity to go on a Ferris wheel. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? People have would love the opportunity to, to even know what a Ferris wheel it is. Exactly. This shit is first world problems. Hey. What the hell am I doing? How shallow am I that I have an opportunity to be, afford to pay for something that is not necessary for my life and I have the audacity to complain about it? I was like, yo, I told everybody on my Snapchat, I was like, I am shallow as hell. Please disregard everything I just said. Hey, hey, but hey, most but at least at least do you... anything like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we are in this social media community where people automatically they want to post shit for the gram. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're more interested in putting something online than actually enjoying the experiences that's happened right in front of your face. Experiencing something through a lens of a phone or a camera or a videotape is different than the the lenses of your eyes. And I want to commend you for calling your own self out because that is what a friend would tell you, right? A real friend, right? And I think Mm -hmm. social media has lost the message of what real friendship is. It's not someone to always support you in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they can support you in you being you and you reaching your full potential, But when a friend believes that you are in the wrong, Mm -hmm. they tell you because they care about your well-being. However, now with social media, with this thirst for likes, it seems as if we only gravitate to people who are on the same page as us, right? Mm -hmm. So that way... What's up? And if not, you're an op. You're an op. What's an op? Opposition. That's like, you know, you're you're an opponent, right? It's like yeah. the new, you know, slang word for hater, I guess. Okay. I mean, I heard that in a song and then I haven't heard it in a while. But again, I'm down in Southeast, <laughs> South Florida and you're a little bit more up north. Yeah, so definitely it's like you're a hater as opposed to taking your time and saying, well, this, could this person be saying something? Um. And then, what about trolls, right? Then you got your opponents. What is okay, the definition so, wait, of a troll? Are you saying, so, wait, is an op a troll? Is that what you're trying to say? I'm trying to make that link. Do you think an op is a troll? Not necessarily. Okay. Because we live in a, such an egocentric society that this idea of an op is just something or someone, right, that doesn't necessarily agree with what you agree with. Okay. But the purpose of a troll, and we're not talking about the nice, you know, trolls from that troll movie, you know, shout out to Justin Timberlake. He did a great job. Um, <laughs> you got the little so musicals cute, and like stuff that. going on. We're talking too. about internet trolls, right? For people, you know, so we can all get on the same page. Hashtag um, emoji movie. Y'all see the internet trolls. Anyway, I really like movies. Going back to this. So, um, internet trolls, these are people who would post provocative statements with the sole purpose to cause arguments or discourse in a comment section right awesome so i wouldn't necessarily consider an op to be a troll okay because if someone is giving you um what is it called uh feedback right yeah um what is it called uh cynicism what's that word called criticism uh, yeah, like, it's like, I forget. Constructive criticism. Sure. If someone is giving you constructive criticism, I did say people criticism. nowadays may consider that person to be an op. But just because that that person is criticizing you, if they're literally giving you, giving it to you in a way that is constructive, where you can actually make a change for the for the betterment of yourself and whatever it is that you're presenting... Yeah. Then that's not necessarily a troll. Right? Okay. Yeah, and it's really interesting because you mentioned constructive criticism and giving it to you in a way that you can digest. I think constructive criticism is relative, right? Like sometimes, especially through the internet, um, the tone and whatnot gets lost, and something that that's may true. seem negative is actually positive, and vice versa. And it's just, you know, I think it's kind of sitting back and like, you know, looking at it with a clear lens. And yeah, I mean, it's interesting what you said about troll trolls. They post provocative statements to get uh, intense reactions. 
Or, as you said, um, not commentary. What's the word that you use? Discourse. I actually am one of those people. Um, <laughs> so you trolling? Who does it on Facebook? <laughs> yes. And I think I think I got a lot of ops. Um, Mm -hmm. But the ops, I don't think, understand why I do it, that I don't necessarily buy into some of these outlandish generalizations that I do. I'm just trying to get some real discourse, have some like actual conversation on Facebook and, you know, outlandish statements seem to get people to buy in, right? At least Mm -hmm. in this current age. Um, Can a troll be, is there a point where a troll can be like a bad thing? Man, I never said troll could be good. I think the general consensus <laughs> is that a troll is always going to be bad, unless you're like the trolls in the troll movie. And in that case, you know, you got some. There's some pretty good singers. So okay, yeah. So then we disagree because I think a troll, by bringing out discourse, by bringing out you know conversations in the comments, even though they stirred up emotions, I think that's a positive to society. You know what I mean? Versus just, like, random superficial things. That's um, true, but the thing is, you have to realize what type of people are responding to these trolls, right? So usually, when someone is against you, right? If someone is, you, you have, you post something in the, in, the, in the comment section. I can give you a, a clear example. There was something that was on Twitter, and... I'm guessing that it was a post in regards to, you know, some political stuff, something with Trump or whatever, right? Because we know that he's a, um, he's on the right. And then so this guy ends up just literally posting a dick pic in the comment section. And then all of a sudden you have people literally just, you know, oh, how dare you disrespect our president and F you this and all sort of stuff, yada, yada, yada. So while it is a provocative thing that he did, right, by posting that picture and it's this, I guess it's this person for um, this gay website or something like that because I clicked on it and then I just seen like stuff going other places and I'm like, well, what is it? I'm like, oh, shoot, that's a booty hole. And I'm like, "Uh uh-uh. I got to get out of here quick. You watch <laughs> that made me think. I was like, I was not prepared for that, right? I really thought that it was like one of your, you know, I guess regular trolls that's just trying to, you know, stir the pot. I didn't know that this quote unquote troll now was really someone that I guess was, I saw later on, he was, you know, for like LGBT rights and things like that. And then he uses like these provocative photos and videos, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? To kind of like, desensitize people to it yeah but then what are the people who receive it responding responding as they're not responding in a like constructive manner they literally just saying a whole bunch of like f you you know die gay person yada 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 like yeah. how so how can you have a good discourse there how are you gonna have this progressive conversation yeah i mean that's true you could i guess you can ask you why are you saying that and if they choose to engage Maybe you'll get some more, and if not, then then no. I guess it it depends. It's situational. Yeah, definitely, definitely on the audience. Oh, so I have a question for you too. So, sure. like, kind of going back to the whole friendship thing, right? So, when you're out with your friends, right, and you go to out on social media, yeah. on Facebook Live, or you mean actually reality? I'm saying in reality, okay. going to dinner with a group of your friends. Okay. Right. I've noticed that some of my friends, when we go to dinner, the first thing we do, and I'm guilty of this, is take a picture of my food. Okay. And sometimes I take multiple pictures just to get the right picture. And by the time I taste the food, like, it's not that great because it's cold. Yeah. Right? So I'm literally, in that case, ruining my perfect experience. Like, I could have given a great review for this food item, but I'm here busy trying to make sure that using filters that the green leaves in the salad look crisp or to get yeah. the perfect lighting you ODing. You things ODing. like that. You. So it's definitely injecting in ourselves, not only on the internet, but like in our real life situations, what things, you know, you felt like you went through, especially like seeing your friends in real life, how social media has affected that interaction that you have. A couple of things. One, you were ODing, meaning you were overdosing, you were overdoing it. Um, (laughs) 
I mean, I love pictures. I'm a I'm a photographer yeah. at heart. So it was I, still good though. I definitely went through this um, social media addiction stage. I mean, I still am, but not for the likes, right? But I definitely went through that, and. I would take pictures of everything, my food and whatnot. Um, and I don't know, I guess I wanted to show people that I was living a great life. Don't get me wrong, I was, right? Like, I'm DP. I'm kind of like, <laughs> I'm Dr. P. I like kind of do a lot of things. I go places, I talk to random people or whatever. But I think I wanted to show that, right? Like, I wanted to mm-hmm. prove that was who I was, you know? And I don't know, you know, I don't, now I don't feel the need to do that. I will still take, you know, pictures of my food once in a while things, but... Now it's from the perspective of I want to share my life and experiences with you, right? Not a, hey, look at me. Look what I'm doing. You guys aren't here with me to enjoy this, right? It's like, oh, cool. You know, people can share in my life with me. And so that's kind of the approach I take. You know, I actually add some like humor, um, humor and comedy to uh, my snaps or whatever, as well as some sarcasm. And if you know me, you get it. If you don't, you know, it may be tricky. The second thing is, my brother, you know, he always goes on dates. He says, yo, if the first thing she do is pick up her phone to take a picture of the food, walk out and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting, but... That's what it means. That that's why I tried to, like, stop myself. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's interesting, but he pretty much was t- talking about a lot of his experiences where he would take women out on dates and he would pay for them and they would spend the whole night like kind of being like, ooh, la la, look at me or whatever. So it's like, are you here to like enjoy the time and experience with the person who took you on the date? Or are you here to sort of be like, I'm on a date, I'm looking nice. Sometimes I don't even show the other person. <laughs> And so I think I think that's when it gets out of hand and like definitely, as you said earlier, uh, egotistical. Mm-hmm. But let's let's get back to trolls real quick. OK, because I want to see if we can make a link between trolls and mental health, mental wellness mm-hmm. in the sense of people are getting depressed these days. And a lot of people are pointing fingers to social media. What you think, Chuck? Mix, we waiting to hear. I mean, you got these uh, Twitter thugs that's out there that are very slick at the mouth. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. So I, I have... I just got started. You already going to stop me? Damn. I was just going to say... Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I just have, you know, from most real social media platform to the least, I'd say Facebook is the least real, meaning the most fake. Mm-hmm. And then after that... Facebook over Instagram? Yes. Facebook over Instagram. Well, I don't have at Instagram least now. at least from my friend friendships. And then and then I would say IG because IG sometimes I do I do follow some really cool people. I follow some therapists. I follow people who are promoting their businesses who are doing real things that are positively impacting the world we live in. Mm-hmm. And then I would say Snapchat is closer to one of the realists because it's like it's unfiltered you know what i'm saying it's unfiltered you see people in their rawness i mean you do have the people who try to like dress it up and show their prettiest sides but i like the idea that you're allowed to be yourself you're allowed to be a little obnoxious and be like i don't care i'm just living life and Mm. then twitter is the realist as you said people slick out the mouth there is i don't give a damn type of thing and you know trump tops it off (laughs) but i'm sorry for interrupting you chet meeks i just didn't want to lose that thought you were saying and we were talking about um the connection between social media and uh mental health yeah um a lot of people are you know you got these twitter thugs out there or anyone that has social media it's so much easier to put down someone when you are typing it, right? Because that person is in front of your face, right? So you don't see, you don't hear that person's voice. You don't see the pain in that person's face or the pain in that person's eyes. So especially uh, there have been situations, especially going on in middle school and high school where you have these quote unquote mean girls who are 
you know, posting up embarrassing pictures of their so-called friends or girls that they're, you know, quote unquote bullying and stuff like that. And these kids are just going in on each other. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of the times because our children are, I would say, sheltered, but also because social media is a fairly new phenomenon. Right. Yeah. Parents nowadays who have children that are Last going through years. this social media bullying and trolls and stuff like that, they, they're not entirely sure how they are going to be able to handle it, yeah. right? It's easy for you to say, you know, um, words don't mean a thing, you know, I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever, jump, you know, sticks to you and stuff like that. But for social media, this is for the world to see. This is not just in front of your um, your school crush. This is yeah. on the internet. Everyone's seeing it. And it's permanent. So a lot of people, they take it to heart. You've seen it many a times when it comes to a lot of celebrities that get negative backlash. Um, you know, because like I said, people they people are quick to judge and they're slow to congratulate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because of that, you know, we inherently as social beings, we want to be liked generally. Yeah. Right. So when someone is against what you are saying or something that, you know, you've put a lot of effort and energy into, um, you know, it hurts. So that can actually push people into depression yeah, and suicide so much yeah. so that I don't know if you guys seen, um, this movie on Hulu called Ingrid goes West and she give us a little is background. like, huh? So give us a little background. Okay, so Ingrid Goes West is this really cool uh, movie. It's on Hulu. It's like a Hulu original movie. And it's this girl who's like a stalker. Um, She doesn't really have any friends. And she feels close to friends that she has on Facebook or different social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think social media, you have the problem because people confuse familiarity with friendship, right? So she befriends some people on social media, on Instagram or whatever, you know, and follows, likes everything, has great supportive comments and stuff like that, yada, yada, yada. People are just being nice to her, regular nice stuff, whatever. And she ends up um, being very upset because this person who she's been Facebook, I'm not sorry, I'm lying, uh, Instagram friends with for an X amount of months, um, doesn't invite her to the wedding. And she feels like, whoa, we've been best friends, yada, 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 stalks her, yada, yada. Then she kind of does the same thing to another person. And then the other person finds out that um, she pretty much was stalking her and wanted to be friends with this other girl. And at that point, she was so distraught and upset because she felt so alone in this world because she didn't have any friends that she filmed her suicide. Crazy. Yeah. This is a fiction, right? This this is fiction. But... But Definitely. This is, it's, you know, I, I, well, first off, Ingrid Go- Goes West is a comedy. I'm not going to give the end. So, like I said, she had her suicide attempt. You guys will find out whether or not she actually was successful or not. But the fact that she, the first thing that she thought of was to take up her phone and do a suicide video and post it on Instagram. That's very telling about how we are when it comes to social media and mental health in our society. Yeah. I'll say this. I um, I do think this is where we often conflate reality as in our everyday experiences mm-hmm. with uh, social media. I, I mean, there's some, of course, there's some intersection, meaning there's some overlap, but they're separate, right? I treat my Facebook as like a joke. Others may treat it as their whole life. And I think that's an issue. Um, and we were talking in, about how you know, people can't even face each other. Some people don't even know how to have real human connection outside of social media. Well, you know, let's keep no. this brief, but like, what what's your experiences on that? Yo, I have had situations where, you know, you're talking to a guy and you're talking, you know, texting and everything like that. And everything is going great. You're laughing, banter back and forth, all sorts of stuff. Wonderful. And then you get to see them in person and the personality falls flat, oh, right? Oh, snap. Like, no eye contact. I have other friends, girlfriends, who you cannot talk to them on the phone. Like, they are strictly text people. 
And then when you get to them in person, you have to have something already planned to do something with them, right? Because you're losing those skills on how to interact with the person that's face to face. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, what you were saying, um, definitely people are unable to have, um, or a lot of people are unable to have like real conversations, um, can no longer have face to face. Uh, they only know how to text, you know, they don't know how to have real conversations, um, in person. Now I prefer to keep like my text just to details, planning, specific schedules, um, anything important. Hey, let's have a call. Right. Cause I find that like, you know, it's, uh, the message is less likely to get distorted when we have a real verbal conversation. You know, if 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 it comes to it, I'll text to have a serious conversation just because of time and, you know, the parameters, you know, we're unable to get on a phone call. Um, but, yeah, you're definitely right. Like, people don't know how to have a conversation. Um, you know, one of our mutual friends, uh, you know, he was saying how, like, it has messed up his dating game because, like, Now, when he tries to get somebody's number, you know, they're like, oh, follow me on IG, follow me on Snapchat. He's like, that doesn't work for me. He's like, I'm a smooth talker. And now, like, whatever. You know, I was like, yo, now you got to kind of work on another aspect of your game, right? At the end of the day, he's going to be a smooth talker, though. And so, like, I kind of feel like I'm losing out, too, because that's where I kind of you know, get in. But um, anyways, yeah, it's just, it's messing up the dynamics. Well, I guess for some people, it's actually working in favor for them. But for the real people with real game, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> let's move on. We wanted to talk about um, social media support groups. Um, time is low, but let's, you know, let's get to it. So in thinking about You know, we said, hey, social media causes, you know, um, has amped up suicide and depression. But what about in helping people gain support for different causes or uh, different um, groups that they may be a part of? Oh, yeah. I mean, while on the one hand, because people, they always present their best selves, right? Um, Those people who go through mental illness and depression, they see that. So that kind of reinforces their depression because you're only seeing one aspect of um, that person's life. uh, For the flip side, it actually has been um, really helpful. There have been, you know, I kind of watch documentaries and stuff like that. And there have been, you know, people who are, I guess, recluse people, right? That's people who are very isolated um, or people who are um, scared of being in public places and things like that. Um, Even people who are disabled um, or people who have gone through uh, a number of physical illnesses or medical ailments. These people who otherwise would have a very difficult time going out into the real world, talking to people and building relationships through the through social media, they're actually able to have very genuine relationships, right? So say, for example, you have kids who have um, like SCID, which is a very serious autoimmune uh, disease. They are unable to go outside at all because pretty much they can die of anything that's outside. That's like the basic um, premise of it. But then now with this, you can do, you can play Call of Duty with your other friends who have skid, right? You can have FaceTime with your other friends who have skid as well. And you're not necessarily missing out on what it's like to be a teenager, right? Because now teenagers are very sedentary. They're in front of a screen all the time anyway. So it's not like because they can't go outside and run and play that their teenage experience is going to be different than any other teenage experience that they have in the United States. Yeah. So for those people, it has definitely worked out. Um, yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think there are a lot of, uh, support groups that are out there. People can, uh, find interest in things that, uh, speak to them that they relate to. Um, I'm part of this uh, personality group called ENFPs. Um, it's a uh, Myers-Briggs type indicator um, personality type. And so... Oh, well, we can't use that anymore. Remember, it's got debunked. Did it really? Yes, it really got debunked. I don't believe that. We'll talk about that later. Another show. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> because 
really all of us on this are very much similar, right? But maybe maybe that's for some other other things. I don't think it's debunked. I think, you know, there has been well, there's been research seriously, and okay. the lady who invented it legit said that she made it up. No, because she took it from Carl Jung, who started it in the um. Well, we're on. We're on the, We're going on a tangent. We're going on a tangent. We were talking about the Myers-Briggs type indicator, by the way, guys. It's this this theory that there are 16 personality types out there. Um, But, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in another show, perhaps. Yeah, but, you know, there are a lot of groups that people can um, find that they affiliate with, and that gives them a lot of, like, courage and strength and, and support in different types of ways. Moving on. How, you know, social media is also causing us to be... A little irresponsible, you know. Check me yeah. talked about how, like, you know, she took twenty pictures of her food at dinner. She checked, you know, <laughs> fifteen different filters. I wasn't saying all of that. And so, in situations of uh, of urgency, how are people responding to that? I mean, I can tell you that there has been in the past there has been. Um, one actually news article. It took place in Florida, actually, your hometown. And there was this mentally retarded kid. No, uh, man. I think he was in like in his 20s or 30s, something like that. Anyway, so he had some he had some developmental delay, right? Yeah. And he actually, I guess, walked into a lake and was drowning. He couldn't swim. And there were a group of, I believe, four or five teenage boys. And the first thing that they did was videotape it and put it on uh, social media and they literally watched this man die. No one picked up the phone to call 911. No one even attempted to walk towards him to kind of give him any sort of help. So that's the first thing. The other thing, there was also another girl who she was on, I think it was on Facebook Live or something like that. And she was driving a car and during that period of time, somehow she ended up getting in a car accident while she was taping this, and her sister ended up dying in the back seat, her younger sister, all the while she was recording. So when we become so addicted to social media, when we become so addicted to likes and to followers, we're actually losing our humanity. Because when usually the when someone is in trouble, your reaction is a fight or flight reaction. That means that you are going to either help that person and fight or that situation may be a little bit too scary for you and you may run away, right? But then nowadays, people are so desensitized to these situations that now the reflex has gone from fight or flight to let me pull out my cell phone to record this. You put this on Worldstar. Let me do this for the gram. You see what I'm saying? Hey, likes equals dollars, though. JK, JK. (laughs) <laughs> sorry this is a serious conversation check me yeah i mean i definitely no that's that's definitely real though um and you know it's 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 horrible it's like put down your phone and go and call help go and find someone right um i don't really know what the purpose of recording it is and if you are the person to record it you're gonna look like an a-hole in front of everyone like why didn't you do something and i think I think people are just like caught up in the moment, like, oh wow, I can I can get more views, I can I can um you know get more followers and whatnot, this hype. But like you said, humanity is important. Uh you know, I social media is not that important. Um and you know, it's better to, you know, look out for each other and whatnot. But yeah, that's crazy. I don't even I don't even think we have to go into that. Um any and those deeper. are just two examples. There have been multiple examples of things that that's along those veins. Yeah. We're going we gonna to get into woke money real quick. But before we do so, I want to talk about thirst trapping, thirst trapping and ghosting. Um, I hate social media because. <laughs> Yet you want it. Okay. Because I think. It has led to a lot of thirst trapping, meaning people, especially women, who are just flaunting their um, their beauty, right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. 
Um, and then on one hand, it's so easy to find a person um, that you can date online that if whoever you were seeing is like, oh, I found someone better. You don't even tell the next person. You don't even talk to the current person you're t- talking with and saying, yo, this was cool. I'm moving on now to something else. You know what I mean? Quick, mm-hmm. quick view on that, Chet Meeks. So, thirst trapping, guys and girls do it. Yes. Um, I see the benefit of people having thirst traps. Like I said, we live in a very egocentric society. So, if I'm posting a sexy picture or something like that, or even if a picture of me do you know doing something cool, the number of likes that I get, the number of comments that I get, that's going to boost my ego. That's going to make me feel better. That's going to help me with my personal self-esteem. So I actually associate thirst trapping with someone who generally has low self-esteem, one, or is a person that is really about to get their money, right? Because yeah. if you are able to get followers or likes based on these thirst traps, you have now garnered a crap ton of followers you are now at a level where you get a check mark on Instagram or whatever it is, you are now considered to be an influencer, yep. right? So that means once you're an influencer, I can say, hey, I have these many followers. It doesn't matter why they followed you, but I have these many followers. Why don't you give me this particular product? I can tell it, I can you know, talk about this product to my followers and I get that product for free. Yeah. Right. If I have a certain amount of followers or I get a certain number of likes, not only do I get free things, but I may also get paid to wear some of those clothing or whatever it is that I'm particularly, you know, using. So thirst trapping, I would say has, it's not just yeah. one or the other, just like different things where I can see it being useful for, um, and then as far as ghosting, honestly, I think that's a punk ass move, to be honest. Nowadays, people aren't a hundred percent with each other. So people just ghost, i.e. stop talking to the person. There is no closure. And when you're in situations where you don't have any closure with, with a particular situation, it actually ends up making it worse for that, for that person. Yep. Right. Who didn't experience that closure. And also for you. The person who did not have the skills or the desire to want to have that closure. Because the thing is, through life, we're going to have difficult conversations with people. Yeah. We're going to do things that we don't want to do. And we're going to see people that we don't like. And we need to be able to learn how to, if we are going to be our best version of ourselves and to be successful people in this world, we have to be able to have the skills so that we can be able to have uncomfortable conversations with people. Yeah. If you keep ghosting people then there's going to be a point in time when you can't just not talk to the person. Yep. Right. If you have a situation with someone that's on your job that you have to literally work on a project with, how are you going to do that? Now you're messing up your money because you're used to this idea of ghosting people and not handling the situation at hand. Believe it or not, you got some grown adults that are going to look for another job. But pretty much, y'all, stop. I mean, but you, they can look for other jobs, but how long is that going to take? Exactly. No, I agree with you, but I'm saying that's how crazy ridiculous it is. Guy. But y'all, stop mm-hmm. ghosting. Be adults. Thirst trapping is not necessarily bad. You know, if you need, you know, if you need a little confidence booster here and there, why not? But don't be... And if you're looking good, go ahead and flaunt it. Yeah. Guy, but... girl, in between, you know, the yeah. uh, the asexuals, the transsexuals, you know, anybody. Yo, if you're looking good and you feel especially great on that day, when someone... A thirst trap doesn't necessarily even have to be sure. something that is naked, right? Oh, yeah. So if you are really feeling good about yourself, post that. Okay. I guess I was just saying, like, if you got 10 pics... And nine of them are thirst traps. There's an issue. All right. We are moving on. It is time for Woke, woke money. money. So last week, we talked about the shared economy and how it can be mutually beneficial to all. Right. Meaning by sharing different assets, cars, um, you know, through uh, Uber, Lyft, um, even through different renting platforms. Uh, providing space through Airbnb for people to um, rent a space to sleep, 
when they're traveling. These things could so be... So what are we talking about this week? Oh, damn. Chet Meeks. Yeah, I am kind of long-winded. Thanks for catching me. <laughs> Today, we're talking about cryptocurrencies. Um, and it's a current buzzword. So what is a cryptocurrency? Well, first off, let's go into a brief uh, background of uh, money and how it has evolved. Um, many forget or actually don't realize that money is just a bartering tool, right? People trade goods for services, uh, meaning like, you know, if Check Mix was a um, chef and I was a uh, plumber, I could go and do some plumbing services for her uh, in return for whatever she was cooking, right? Mm-hmm. Now, transaction costs became very high, meaning there's too much time and energy required to do this exchange. For example, a baker tries to get services from a plumber. The plumber does not need bread from the baker because he already has enough. They have to look for another person, a party who can convert the bread for something the plumber could actually use. So this got too complicated. So then they went from like bartering to gold to cash and eventually to electronic debit cards and credit cards. And now we're moving to cryptocurrencies, which is the digital form of money, right? This is a new technology, um, meaning that it's not quite established yet, but we expect digital money to be, you know, here to stay within the next few, um, you know, within the next few years. So what are examples of cryptocurrency? So uh, Bitcoin is one of them. And okay. it and it started out, I think, uh, it started out a couple years ago. And On now, the black market, right? what's that? <laughs> On the black market, right? I'm not too sure, but I do, I do think so. So there's, there's some, um, there's different cryptocurrency markets, kind of like there's different, um, different countries have their own currencies. There's different oh, okay. types of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin was one of them. And that has been one of the criticisms that it has gotten is that it's not entirely clean. Um, however, Bitcoin has kind of lasted. Now it's, I think one Bitcoin is, I think worth about like, last I checked a, a couple weeks ago, about 14, um, thousand dollars it was up as high as like over twenty thousand um but it came back down so it's worth a lot however there are other um cryptocurrency platforms that are looking to compete um you know for those who are risk heavy you could try to get into a few and see if you're um you buy something at a dollar you know who knows how much it'll be worth uh, in the future but for everyone else it's just kind of you know be a little bit more open-minded about it follow them learn a little bit more information but it's really just a new type of money that's coming um, into our lives. So wait, how does it work? So I use my U.S. cash dollars, and then I say I want to buy X amount of bitcoins. Um, there's different uh, platforms out there or websites that you can go to. Usually, you have to sign up for some sort of exchange portal, and then from mm-hmm. there, depending on. Um, Depending on the rules of that portal, you can buy different cryptocurrencies. Um, uh, I haven't done it yet, so I can't speak on the details per se, but it really depends on the um, platform you're using to buy those currencies. So are these cryptocurrency stuff, is that subject to inflation? That's a great question. Um, I think that's one of the Right now, banks and the federal government has haven't gotten involved. And so right now, it's not really an inflation thing. It's more so just the, the pure market, right? People just kind of buying into it or not. Um, but, That's dope because gold is never going to, you know, gold is always going to be gold. And if it's yeah. not going to be subject to inflation, then it seems like a pretty good thing to at least get involved yeah. in. We ha- yeah, we have to see because, you know, right now it's because it's a new technology, it's a new coin. Um, I think the, you know, U.S. government and other countries want to regulate it, right? And so with regulation, that might, you know, sort of decrease some of the benefits that we're now seeing from it. So we'll have to wait and see. Gotcha. And then my last question is this. So if it's a Bitcoin, right, can I use it in a vending machine? 
like can I like when I get the money back like does it come back in like coins so I mean I don't know anything about this <laughs> great questions <laughs> it's not an actual coin right it's a digital coin so it's um so like the ones you get on Mario like Mario when you gain the coins to get the money for the games except you can't see them <laughs> so okay. it's um it's a way to describe um you know, if you say you have one Bitcoin, and we're going to use Bitcoin as an exchange, if you have one Bitcoin, it's worth this amount of dollars. So it's imagining that you right. had a coin, right? So I can't feel it. So it's kind of like stock market. Yes. Who knows? Perhaps in the future you'll be able to, but um, the point is it's digital, right? Okay. Um, you carry around uh, wallets, and I guess it would be all on the cloud. <laughs> all right, then. Okay. Cool. Thank y'all for having us uh, on the gray zone. Hope y'all enjoyed our conversation about social media, some of its detriments and uh, benefits to society. We'll be here. Yeah, guys. Thanks for listening and make sure you subscribe. Click yeah. that button. Subscribe to our YouTube, y'all. Thank y'all. We out. Dr. P. Check makes peace. <laughs>